Hey guys, so when it comes to those points that I was mentioning on the side of the screen, I found an article that kind of tells us about what to expect. So I'm going to just read it out to you and then, well, I'll make a few comments and then we'll get into the let's play. Sound good? Good. Alright, an octave higher relationship points. So I wasn't wrong about the points being relationship related. The enchanting visual novel, An Octave Higher, brings you a new feature. Within the menu of the game, you will now be able to keep track of the relationship points each of, the of each of the characters. Your choices hold a stronger influence than you think, as each of these points will influence what ending of the game you will see. So, of course, they give you some screenshots of things that uh, may or may not be spoilers, depending. So, at one point, we may or may not have to fight Frederick, which I'm pretty sure I came across at one point in the first playthrough, but I really can't remember. Understand what your choices mean as important decisions in the game now show you how they have affected your characters. Oh right, the Aretha, Aretha, Aretha thing. That would give you a point between Aretha and Franz. Okay. I already went by that, so that's... And I didn't do it this time. In the last playthrough, before this update was even done, I did it. Oh, this is a, that's going to be such a huge disadvantage to me because I'm not going to know exactly how that's... Oh, man. Because I don't know what relationship points I had with people and which ones I didn't because this wasn't in there before. Ooh. Oh, no. That's going to mess things up for me. Want to know how to get all the endings? Read the walkthrough. Read the walkthrough. Have you read news? No. Oh. Kittelung's new visual novel, One Small Fire at a Time. Huh. I will check that out and see what it shows me. Oh god, I'm on a browser. Oh, hello. I have to fix my screen adjustments. Hang on. Okay. Let me encompass everything that we have going on here. New visual novel, one small fire at a time. Okay. These are their past ones and the one that we're currently on right now. Uh, let's see. Different characters. Same art style. That sound, that works for me. Okay. It's been a while since they released an octave higher, but we haven't announced an anything new since then. Well, today I'm going to tell you about a visual novel we're working on. What took us so long? The truth is, we spent some time planning a new RPG. We had carefully laid out the scope of the game, designed the characters, drawn some concept art, done a ton of research for the story, outlined the plot, and even started writing some dialogue, but finally decided that we were not ready to take on this project until we had more resources. If we went ahead with what we have now, I'm afraid some people would just call the resulting product a broken experiment or something. We're not cancelling the project, however, so expect to see it sometime in the future. Okay. I don't know. Sorry, it will have to be another another time. Oh! It's related to the G-Song thing, isn't it? Oh, it's related to his homeland, isn't it? Oh, I'm curious. We're now working on a game called One Small Fire at a Time, which is a prequel to our last game, An Octave Higher. Oh! And, like its predecessor, it's also a visual novel. One small fire at a time is a rather long name, isn't it? Feel free to shorten it to one small fire. Or those things. Okay. One small fire at a time is set in the same city where the story of an octave higher takes place, but 22 years earlier. Here's the story description. In Overture, magic can cure all diseases, but not that of the mind. Society looks down on those whose illness is incurable by magic, and lunatics must stay in madhouses until they recover their sanity, if they ever do. Oh, I already like this theme! Ah! 13-year-old Janice. Oh my god, Janice! <gasps> Janice is in this! And we're for seeing it from her perspective, aren't we? Oh, oh, I'm so excited! 13-year-old Janice has been living in one such madhouse ever since she was abandoned by her parents for having the worst kind of madness known to man. Worse than the depression that makes some people long for death. Worse than the paranoia that makes us makes its sufferers live in constant fear. Worse than hallucinations and delusions, because in a city where everyone can use magic, Janice alone can't. She couldn't use magic before. Ignore my phone going off if you can hear it. Her disability makes Janice an easy target for bullying, but it never stops her from fighting back, even though she always loses. This catches the attention of Iden Wolf. Oh, she was adopted. 
she was adopted, taken in by somebody else, wasn't she? Because she was abandoned by her parents, so she was adopted by Iden Wolf, which is why her last name is Wolf. <gasps> oh, I'm already figuring, I'm already putting pieces together. <laughs> A powerful mage and police commander who was visiting the madhouse on an investigation. All oh, that explains so much! In Wolf, Janice finds a, rather, a father figure, but can their fateful meeting cure Janice of her madness? Oh, he's so excited. That description will likely change before the game is released, but I hope it's enough to give you some idea of what the story is about. Oh, it gives me plenty of idea. Oh, it gives me plenty. I am so excited right now. From that description, you might have guessed that mental illness would be one of the story themes, and indeed it is, but its role is similar to that of class struggle in an octave higher. It drives the plot, but ultimately it's the characters that are more important. Yay! Oh, I'm so excited! Mental illness things are like my favorite subject to focus on. Because like, I have depression and anxiety, so like anything that is related to mental illness kind of catches my attention, because it's like, oh, I can relate to this. This is cool to me. And same with class struggle. I can relate to that, too, because, like, I've been in poverty my entire life. Like, I live paycheck to paycheck, and now I'm putting myself in, like, enormous debt because of college. But, like, still, like, it's just, it's so cool. I don't know. Madhouse where our protagonist lives. Oh. Honestly, that's a really fancy madhouse. I'm kind of curious about why it's so fancy, but all right. That doesn't mean we won't try to present this theme as accurately as possible. In order to write this story, I've sourced Wikipedia and other sources on the internet to read up on various mental disorders. Psychiatry, history of psychi psychiatric institutions, in, 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 bleh, I can't talk, I'm so excited, institutions and other stuff related to mental illness. If I suddenly went missing tomorrow and the police went through my browsing history, I imagine things would get pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, that would make things interesting. I also read Suzanne Kasten's brilliantly written memoir, memoir, Girl Interrupted. I've heard of it, but I haven't read it. I, I've heard of it, though. Uh, now I'm kind of curious. Which tells the story of the two years she spent as a young girl in a psychiatric hospital. Oh. I found out later that there was a movie based on the book, but I didn't watch it because I read the plot summary on Wikipedia and it sounded like the filmmakers had butchered Kasten's real-life story. Yeah, probably better to read the book in that case. That said, even with all that research, I won't, I won't claim to know what it's like to live as someone who has been diagnosed with a mental disorder, and as with any fiction, a little dramatization is in the, 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 inevitable. I'm sorry, I'm so excited, I can't talk. <laughs> so I apologize in advance if I get something wrong. Just remember that this is a story in which people shoot fire out of their hands. Oh, cool! By the way, just because the protagonist is female doesn't mean this is an Otome game. It should be obvious to anyone who played an octave higher, but I thought I'd mention that. One Small Fire at a Time will only be about half as long as an octave higher. It's a prequel, but the story is written so that new players can jump right in without having to play the first game. For those who plan to play both, though, I definitely recommend starting with an octave higher. Yes! Yes! This is brilliant! I'm so excited! I don't know when this is going to be released. That is the worst part about this. I just don't know when this will be released and finished! And I've had... Uh, Abimo cards, uh, Abimo, Amiibo cards for Animal Crossing fell on me because <laughs> I'm banging my desk <laughs> around and I've got Amiibo cards on the top portion of it right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I'm excited. I want this so bad. Oh my God. I want this so bad. Oh, I want this so bad. <laughs> Man, I'm so excited. They they need to make this a reality, like, right now. Okay, so apparently I've played about nine hours of this game so far, and I'm not even close to being done the second let's play. Oh well. The list is going to be similar to Magical Diary, where I've got way too many hours on that, too. <laughs> but, yeah, I am so excited about the prequel of this coming out, and they're working on it. Like, oh man, I love indie corporation things where like they make really good quality games but like it's just uh, I'm so excited and I just I can't voice accurately how excitedly I am other than like flailing and smashing things and just screaming at the top of my lungs with excitement just oh man this is gonna be so cool Janice Wolf is the main character and you get to know her backstory and how she became who she is in this game right now <gasps> I'm just so excited <laughs> Anyway, before I get way over my head, I'm gonna just start this.
Okay, so as we mentioned earlier, these are relationship points between people. I have none right now. No idea how to get any. Like, I missed an opportunity with these two because I did it already in the first playthrough before the update was made. So, if I had done the whole using her name as a magic uh, charm to calm down then uh, about the symposium, then I would have gotten a relationship point with her. And I don't know if there's any other relationship points that I could get other than that right now. Because as far as I know, that would probably be the first one that would ever pop up in the game. If you do get this after the update or something, so... Yeah, I don't know. I'm so curious. But we will find out when the time comes. Let's get started. There aren't many students outside because most of them are still in class. I also don't see a reason anywhere. The sun is still high. Looking at my chronometer, I learned that there's still more than two hours until the sun sets. I should be able to arrive at my destination before the end of the day. Shortly after I cross the street, an omnibus comes. At this hour, the omnibus is nearly empty, even this close to the city center. The commute took more than an hour, but I'm finally close to the place I'm looking for. Now I just need to find the place. I look for street signs. As soon as I find one, I walk over to it. Unfortunately, there are no signs that bear the street name written on the paper, but there is one that sounds similar. I try going that way. I plod from street sign to street sign. Almost everything is unreliable. At times, I have to almost I have to double back and try to find different ways. I'm sorry, I'm still over excited about the prequel. <laughs> I can't talk right now. After wandering for who knows how long, I find that it's almost sundown. I'm all, I'm walking along a river, a stone's throw away from a big curved bridge that crosses the water. I head to the bridge and cross it. poverty area and you know that it's really shit over here to be able to like still see something as nice as this I have to be able to appreciate it because like if you're someone who's in poverty and you don't really have much to your name but you still get to see something nice or experience something good then you know you treasure it you really do probably more than other people figured out how to say proletariat properly and I actually figured out that the terms that are used in here to describe poor middle class and higher class are from Karl Marx's uh, work I, that we use today as a reference to stuff. That was a really poor explanation. <laughs> it's really hard to tell my college student with that kind of explanation. But like, you get what I mean. Like, I, I that's how I found out how to pronounce it properly. That and practicing enough where I've had to say it multiple times within a let's play in order to actually do it. But yeah, they they are definitely using really good talk. 
topics for their games, for the plot, and climate, and, no, not climax, um, uh, conflict, there we go, conflict, that's what the word I was looking for, and I think that's why I can really appreciate this, uh, small little gaming company, because, I don't know, I just always appreciate games that can create content that's based on really controversial topics, I guess you could say, that really well up emotions inside people that make people feel really intensely about something because a lot of people just don't want to feel that anymore. They just want to push it aside and pretend everything's okay and I don't think that's right. You have to face reality. Here it is. This is the address written on the paper. The house is big and luxurious, but it's not what I had expected. I double check and triple check the address, but this is really it. The name of Mrs. Beauvoir is even written above the door. Mason de Beauvoir. What is this place? This is definitely not an ordinary house. Should I knock on the door? A dirty looking man starts to A dirty looking man starts to talk to me as he walks by. Are you a first timer? What are you waiting for? Don't be embarrassed. We all know this place. Just go inside. <laughs> it, excuse me? The best girls are only available later at night, but you'll be able to find someone to suit you even now. What are you talking about? Don't pretend, boy. You're here to have fun with a girl, right? Or maybe you just want to see some tits? They might let you look for free if you pretend you're lost. <laughs> no, I'm not here for that. Realizing what kind of place it is, I quickly turn and walk away. Frederick Godwin. Why did he do this to me? Sure, he might have been annoyed because I asked for funding, but he didn't have to make me come all the way out here out of spite. My heart is beating fast. Now, how do I get back to the city? I try to retrace my steps quickly. I don't hate poles, but that doesn't mean I fancy being around them. Soon I'm lost. Each corner looks as dirty, dark, and decrepit as the last. Nothing stories me as familiar. At intersections, I now pick roads purely by instinct, but my only clue being that roads near the city are supposed to be wider. Following this reasoning, at last I come across an open area with a wide road. Unlike the dark alleys in the slum, this place is bathed in the orange light from the setting sun. I'm relieved to have found my way back to the city. Thank my intelligence. Except the place doesn't look like a city at all. If anything, it's even more rural. I walk some more before spotting the site on which stands the number of large old buildings. From it comes the sound of machinery, a labor and of labor, and of magic being cast. I know I should be going back to find the roads that will take me back to the city, but somehow I am drawn to the site. When I finally stop walking, I'm already standing in front of its rusty gate. On it, a sign reads, Magical Mechanical LTD. Magical Mechanical? I see. This must be a factory where magic machines are assembled. The sun is setting. Yay, we get to be with Elise! The setting sun marks the end of my shift. I glance outside the factory building to see the road and some small buildings painted orange by the setting sun. I slip my left hand in my apron pocket. The vial is still there. Yeah. You know it's not going to work, right? I don't reply. <sighs> See you tomorrow, Liz. See you. I watch silently as Jude leaves the factory. When I can no longer see her, I too make my way outside, but instead of exiting the gate, I make a right turn. After circling the factory, I arrive and find what I was looking for. <clears throat> I circle the factory, cautiously moving. I don't know what it is I'm looking for, but I keep surveying the complex. After a while, I find a small opening that leads to a place like a small backyard. I enter slowly, but stop when I see someone. A girl. She's around my age, perhaps younger. She's dressed in a factory uniform. Her shoulder-length hair is disheveled, but it's not unsightly. A small braid runs behind her right ear, but not the left. The asymmetry makes her unusually special, especially considering her surroundings. She's sitting at an old piano that's set in the middle of its abandoned yard behind the factory building, as unusual and out of place as the butter as the beautiful lady who sits at it is in the middle of these slums. She reaches out to the piano with her right hand and gently presses a right key presses a key right in the middle of the keyboard. Silence. Having failed to produce any sound with the middle F key, I try an octave higher to the right. <laughs> I love it when they slip in the title somewhere. It always makes me happy. I don't know why, but it does. More silence. 
Not surprising, this piano has been broken since the day it was made, for all I know, but I always like to begin like this. My family had this same model when I was a small child, which I used to play many times. My parents even said I was pretty good at it, but we know parents say that about everything their kid does. I found this poor piano here by accident about a month ago. Nobody knows who dumped it here. Since then, I have been coming here after work almost every day just to be near the piano. For some reason, being with it relaxes me. The girl sits there motionless for a while, then suddenly she produces a small vial of bluish liquid. I've seen that liquid enough times to be able to tell what it is right away. Curcuma xanthor... xanthorhiza, or temulawak, tem, temulawak, as it is called in its native land. In this kingdom, we call it mana. What is she going to do with it? Man, I always forgot. This is the one port... This is the one part in the game where they do so many perspective switches and like I know that they're trying to do it so that like it gives more tension to what's about to happen and you're like ooh whoa but like it kinda it's a little bit painful with that transition every single time that's my only complaint like that's my only complaint right now when it comes to this game am I really going to do it? I'm sorry for lying to you Mr. Nailton I actually drank the potion from lunch break I'll find a way to make up for this somehow. I gaze at the drink in my hand again. Yes, I'm going to do it. I carefully take the cap off the vial, bring the vial to my lips, and empty it. Having drunk the mana, the girl begins both her hand brings both her hands slightly above the piano, palms facing down, as though giving it her blessing. See, like, it just gives one sentence and then switches back over. It's just... I don't think I'd mind it so much if it wasn't for the transition, but without the transition, you wouldn't know who's talking, so it's just... Uh, I don't know. Maybe it could have been done more smoothly. I close my eyes. If anyone saw me right now, she'd think I was in the middle of doing mental preparation before performing a sona sonata. I feel compassion building up. She's going to... But no, she can't be thinking of... No, nobody can fix a broken thing with healing magic. Compassion magic can only affect living beings. You can heal a man or woman or child or animal, but not a piano. Compassion. Transform. Amplify. Light day, 26-6 till SAM, 3.13. Thanks for coming to my house, Joan. Johan. Always a pleasure, Joel. It's an honor to meet you, Lord Godwin. My name is Franz Byron, a student of Professor Poe's. My father is having a meeting with the famous professor from Conservatoire de Overture to evaluate yesterday's event, as well as discuss potential projects that may receive some work from the MM. Because I attended the symposium yesterday, my father insisted that I be here. What a pain in the ass. What I don't understand is why that student is also in this room. In fact, isn't he supposed to be at the conservatoire? Even though it's late day and there are no classes, at least he could have the decency to do his homework and be far away from me. Originally, people only rested from work on Sunday, but sometime in the last century they decided that they would work five days a week instead of six. Late day joined Sunday to make the modern weekend. So yesterday's symposium. Yes, MM will be having a shareholder meeting next week, and I'm thinking of proposing to invest in some research projects that have potential to bring good returns for the company. All our representatives have submitted their recommendations to me, but I also wanted to hear your opinion. Not all our representatives, Father. I don't remember giving enough of a damn to write a report. Oh, ho, 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 ho. now I'm obviously biased, but if I may, I'd like to suggest my own student's research project. I don't think I'm able to get into the deep register that I normally can with him right now. I've been trying. Like, I think I did. At, I think I finally reached it in, like, the last episode I did. But, I don't know. It's being really difficult right now, and I'm not sure if it's because I'm, I'm not hydrated enough or some weird thing. Like, I have water with me. And, or if it's because my vocal cords just aren't cooperating with me after... Uh, recordings I've been doing 
other than this, I don't, I don't know, maybe I just need to rest my vocal cords or maybe I'm getting sick or something. I really hope not. Oh shit, I need to plug in my diary. One sec! Hmm, a student project? Which one is that? It's the one about the study of compassion magic, my lord. Oh, that. Any other projects you can recommend, Joanne? Heh, <laughs> my father's harsh. He completely disregards Poe's idea without any comment whatsoever. Uh, my lord, if you're interested, I can give you more details about my research. My father eyes the student coldly without turning his head. I think I've heard enough details from our own experts. With all due respect to Professor Poe, your advisor, and my friend, I have to tell you that our team of experts have decided that your research is unlikely to produce anything of value. Well, I... I think a scientific theory that will lead to the creation of compassion magic machines would be very... Very valuable indeed. I think you misunderstand. I'm not saying that the result you're hoping to get from the research would be worthless, I'm saying that it is unlikely to yield such a result. Our team of experts at MM have concluded that it is very improbable that your research will succeed. Joff, while I agree that the product is very ambiguous, I believe it is still worth pursuing for. That's not the right voice. I did it completely wrong. I just... Joff, while I agree... Yeah, I can't do it. I don't know why, but I can't do it. Take one sip of water more and see if I can get this. Joff, while I agree that the project is very ambitious, I believe it is still worth pursuing for. Even if it ultimately fails, we will surely gain valuable insights into compassion magic, which will enrich our understanding of magic in general. Yeah, nope, that's still not right. Oh well, guess I have to go with it. Joe and I agree with you, and indeed I commend this student for choosing to undertake this important research. However, MM is a business. Our goal is not to understand magic for its own sake. We require a monetary return on investment, either through a new product or improved functionality of an existing product. If your research is purely academic, you're better off asking for funding from the king. Oh, ho, 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 ho. the conservatoire itself is a public institution, so we're already being funded by the monarchy. Unfortunately, most of that money is used for operational costs. There's very little left for research projects. <laughs> is it my turn to say something? I'm not still sure. I'm still not sure why I was even called here. Whether Father wants to fund this silly project or not is none of my business. Actually, just yesterday, I think I might have discovered the key to making compassion magic work on non-living beings. I saw something very extraordinary near the MM factories. May I tell the story? You were in the industrial district? Go ahead. Well, I, uh, was lost in the Proles district yesterday, and from there happened to stumble upon an MM factory. The student gives me a quick glance before continuing. Obviously, he remembers what he did to you, what you did, what you, bleh, what you did to him. I circled the factory and by chance came across this girl who was sitting at a broken piano. I don't know why she did it, but she cast revive on it, on the broken piano. Casting revive on a piano? What a stupid thing to do. Revive only revitalizes damaged cells. It can only heal, not bring the dead back to life. Was she hoping the piano would transform back into a tree? At that moment, of course, the area was filled with the white light, and just then, I felt that I heard the piano make a sound. When the light subsided, I saw the girl, and I could tell that she had also heard it. But when she pressed the piano keys again, there was only silence. Only then did I realize that there was never any sound. I must have imagined it. But at the exact moment the spell was cast, I was very sure that it had fixed the piano. It was a novel experience, and I would like to conduct some experiments to see if the phenomenon is quantifiable. Everyone is silent for a second. We're trying to make sense of this story. But it didn't make a sound, did it? No, the piano was still broken after she cast the magic spell. Then you haven't discovered anything. Hmm, I personally find this story very interesting. Franz knows magic well. If he feels that the girl's magic was abnormal, it is definitely worth looking into. You said this was in an MM factory? Was this girl a factory worker? Yes, I'm sure she was. She was a teenage girl, about 14, 16 years old. She was dressed in a factory uniform. Her hair was down to her shoulder, and she had a braid that ran behind her head. Huh? Wait, that girl... Wait, did you say she had a braid? Everyone looks at me suddenly, as if I were a ghost that had just stepped through the wall. Uh, yeah, behind her right here. What about the left? No, definitely only on the right side. Frederick, if you must ask questions, ask something relevant to the discussion. There is no mistake. It was definitely her. It was that angel. 
It was the beautiful girl I saw in front of Mason de Beauvoir. Ooh, what's wrong with being interested in a girl, Drog? Father, in my opinion, it would be good for M.M. to fund this research project. I quickly direct the discussion back to that student's research before I'm found out. I've only got one shot at this. My father raises an eyebrow while the rest of his face is unchanged. He's unimpressed. I bet he was born with that face. Congratulations, ma'am. It's a boy. Oh, how is my baby doctor? Well, from looking at his face, I think he wants to see a proposal on how you and your husband plan to provide him with the best environment to grow up and study. Probably like that. Explain. Ahem. <clears throat> Here goes. I think you need to look at it from a different angle. MM can fund this research not as an investment, but as a marketing campaign aimed at improving the company's image in academia. By funding a purely academic research project, MM can claim that it is helping to advance science. We would be promoting our corporate social responsibility. It will make MM more popular among the students. When they graduate, more of them will want to work for MM. And if you think about it, this is much cheaper than the kind of advertising MM normally does. It's just a student project anyway. There's only one researcher, and the salary is lower than an average MM scientist or engineer. Other than salary, he'd only need money to buy equipment and maybe pay a few assistants. All taken together, it still accounts to little more than a rounding error for MM. Now my father's other eyebrow is also raised. His mouth is slightly open, but he is still silent. I bet he never knew that his son is so shrewd about business. <laughs> the younger jaw... Oh, fuck. The younger Lord Godwin made a pretty sound argument. What do you think, Trough? Well, well. I think it can't hurt M.M. to fund this project. My father's face returns to its normal expression. Completely emotionless. After all, I can see it's magic already. Amazing. Hmm? What do you mean? Oh, wow, that was really bad. After this, I think I should give my vocal cords a break. He makes my son interested in a science project. It doesn't get much more magical than that. Oh ho 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 ho! I have to say that it surprises even me. I managed to convince my father, but it wasn't really my argument that made my father change his mind. I don't know if I should be happy about this. Thank you very much, Lord Godwin. Er, my lord. I promise I'll deliver a good result with this project. <laughs> After that, Father and the Professor talk about several other research projects. The student and I don't speak another word. Thanks, Frederick. Thanks to you, Lord Godwin agreed to fund my project. My Father and the Professor are left together after the meeting. I don't know where they're going. Don't mention it. Oh, by the way. To be honest, I was a bit irritated yesterday after you sent me to the... that place. I was rather panicked when I found out what kind of place it was. <laughs> <sighs> and by the... You really got me there, but I'm not angry, because now I know that you sincerely wanted to help me and only gave me that address as a joke. That's... not the case, friends. But how did you get that place's address anyway? Silence! What adults, if my father was still here and heard about me going to Mason, I'd be fed to a dragon. Oh, so to speak. Dragons aren't real, of course. That, what, what is this, a fantasy land? Ahem... <clears throat> By the way, can you bring that girl here tomorrow? That girl? The factory worker who tried to fix a broken piano. Oh, do you want to meet her? I, well, I want to see her compassion magic with my eyes. Uh, yeah, of course. You must be really interested in compassion magic. <laughs> I'll have you smitten, you fool. Okay, I'll find and bring her here tomorrow. I don't know why I want to see that girl so much, to be honest. She is beautiful, but she isn't the only beautiful. I guess there's just something about her that's different from all the other girls. After Franz brings the girl here tomorrow, I won't have any need for him anymore. To hell with his nonsensical research. Great. Good luck on your research. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Frederick. Thanks again for your help. Okay. That's probably not a bad idea. I'm kind of behind. I've got a lot of uh, footage I gotta do. So I will see you guys on Wednesday. Bye bye. Hey guys, and that was an octave higher. If you're interested in checking out the next episode, then just click on the icon on the right hand side 
If you're interested in any of the other games that I have listed here that have very similar storylines that are pretty intricate, I would say to check them out as well. And if you want to subscribe, just click my icon and we're good to go. So yeah, see you later.